I'm only a young person, and the world I've grown up in is extremely confusing yeah. when it comes to the question of what different duties men versus women have in society. Sure. Can you walk me through what the authentic Catholic teaching is on the social limits and responsibilities of men versus women, both in and out of marriage, and why it is the, the way it is? Wow. Wow, indeed. Firstly, let me say, dear fellow, what, what's his name? Basil. Basil. Firstly, Basil, let me apologize on behalf of my entire generation and our fathers for screwing things up so thoroughly for you. Um, it's really pretty, pretty awful what we've done. Okay, got that out of the way. Yeah. Now, the second thing, however, is that in the male-female relationship, you have to start with yourself. Why? Well, because you have control over you. You don't have control over anybody else. So, we are talking about that book, Chivalry. Get a hold of something like that. Be a chivalry. Find out what the chivalrous gentleman is. And then become one. Uh, another good example of that is a, a book by Mark Giroir called The Return to Camelot. About the English gentleman. What was that name again? The Return to Camelot. No, I'm, excuse me, the author name. Oh, uh, Marc uh, Giroir. Okay. He was a descendant of a French Canadian family. G I R O U A T? G I R O U A R D. Oh, A R D. Okay, there we go. Uh, descendant of a French Canadian family that in the 19th century settled in England. Uh, because the, um, the first one to go to England was appointed. I think, if I remember correctly, the chief justice of a British colony that had French law, as Quebec did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the uh, colonial office said, well, we need us a judge who knows French law, so <laughs> we'll take this guy from Quebec, because he speaks English perfectly as well, and we'll put him there, which mm -hmm. is what they did. And now they're a big literary family in, in England. Because mm. the funny thing about French Canadians who get anglic anglicized to a degree, they tend to be far better at writing English than most native English. How dare you, and you're biased. How am I biased? I mean, it could be any French Canadian that writes better than most people who write English. I, I think Italians who learn English write the be better than English people. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like Lucky like Luciani. <laughs> oh! oh. Wild Brando. Anyway. <laughs> Right, you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't think Brando was to, uh, Italian. Maybe a little bit, but not, not really. I looked he, him was, he played Italian. He played Italians all the time. He was great, but yeah, yeah okay. All right. Anyway, this doesn't help you a lot. By yeah, the sorry. Way. But we digress. It's easy for us to do, having moved forward into the future the way we did without yeah. a time machine. Yeah, the time machine. It's very bizarre. It's exhausting. I'll tell you. <sighs> You know what steampunk is? Any, anyway, no, let's, let's move along. Don't, don't let's get trapped in this. Uh, but seriously, uh, learn to be a gentleman. Learn to be a knight. That's the first step for you. Become a man of honor. A man for whom the faith is everything. Now then, what to look for in a woman is what you're really asking for. And that, <laughs> that's very complex. Um, for starters, you want a woman who shares your faith, obviously, but you also want a woman who shares your interests, and presumably your interests other than the faith. So you want a woman who, having the faith, wants to live up to it. You see, neither she nor you may know all the ins and outs, but if you both have the desire to be a good Catholic spouse, then you've got a much better chance of actually becoming one than someone who has no blooming idea of what that means. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. He, he, he is also, he, he asks, what are the different duties men versus women have in society? I don't know what that... Well, what that, it, yeah, well, of course, today, I mean, I just saw the uh, Netflix's reworking of Lost in Space. Okay. You didn't think we were going to get out of here without a reference to pop culture, did you? I like those references, so I'd hope not. All right. So, what got me, having grown up on the original, one of the happiest memories for me was Christmas of 1967, 
my dad got me the Jupiter 2 playset with all the lost in space. So, okay, what? That's fine. All right, something's a lost on the end. All right. To, what? It's a cool toy. It I was, can understand that. It was a tremendous that. toy. Okay. Anyway, um, the thing that annoys me about the new version, and, and don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the new version. I binge watched it, wasted a whole day. Boom. But what's annoying about it is the. Uh, the uh, what is the phrase that was used by somebody connected to the show? The uh, conformity to modern gender roles or something. Um, basically, the idea is that the woman takes the lead in everything, and she knows best, and the man is a moron, and you know, or or with with that uh, thing, um, annihilation. The movie and I oh, the movie, yeah. Where they send in an all all female action team because uh, men poisoned by their testosterone will inevitably go crazy and kill each other. Of course. We all know this. Well don't go with that. <laughs> That's wrong. The duties of a man are to look after his own I mean after his duty to God, are to look after and country, are to look after his own. Uh, to look after the weak. To stand up for what is right, to be as strong as he can himself for that very purpose. You know, a couple of episodes ago I went a little bit crazy on the whole Boy Scout show. Well, really, the Boy Scout oath gives you a very good idea of what it is to be a man, a proper man. On my honor I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. That's pretty good, you know. Um, the duties of women, well, if they're married, their duties are to assist their husbands in the uh, beginning of a family and the, and the maintenance of the same. <clears throat> It is very, very important, I think, from a practical point of view, that you have a lot of shared interests. Uh, because if you don't, you get bored with each other. Believe it or not, sexual excitement tends to ebb after a while. And romance, well, that's here and gone. I know many happily married couples for whom the romance sort of comes in waves. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, if, you, if you imagine a couple being married for like 50 years, okay? There are times when all of a sudden, all at once, for one reason or another, or seemingly no reason at all, all the romance of that first period suddenly hits them all at once. And then there are other periods where it's like having a roommate. I see. You know? Well? Peaks and valleys. You know, that's like, uh, it's kind of like spirituality, to be honest, because, yeah. you know, you have air, uh, times of aridity. Mm -hmm. And then you have times of consolation. And if you think about it, it's like relations with your blood relatives. Your mm. parents, your siblings, your cousins. Oh, right. There are times when you think to myself, my God, you know, my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad, my cousin, just, oh, gosh, I'm lucky just to be related to this person. Yeah. And then there are other times you can kill them. Yeah. Uh, and... Your relationship has to be strong enough to encompass all of that. You know? And then there are other times you don't think about them at all. Right. You know, you're just doing what you do. And the last thing that's in your mind is Cousin Leo. You yeah. know? But then you're at a family reunion or something, and it suddenly hits you like a ton of bricks. And you'll find this also, by the way, with uh, close friends you don't see for a while. It hits you like a ton of bricks. Why are you so fond of the guy? That's it. You know, like he'll, he'll crack the soda joke he cracks. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. And so, the, yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, your relationship with your wife or husband, there has to be that element of it. But she must be committed to you as an individual. You've got to be committed to her but there's a difference. And the difference is that you are the husband. You should wear the trousers. 
All right, or killed if you're Scots. Anyway, point of the matter is, is that uh, it gets harder and harder to find women who have not been touched, even Catholic women, by the whole feminist thing. It does get very difficult. And, I mean, I know a lot of uh, Catholic girls who mean well and who consider themselves very traditionally minded and they want to be housewives up until push comes to shove. And then it's their way or the highway. And what's sad about that, and ironic at the same time, is that if they realized how easy it is to make a man happy, unless he's a monster, you understand, and how once he's happy, how easy it is to, shall we say, guide him along the paths you want him to go, um, oh gosh, they'd make their lives, their own lives a lot simpler. A lot easier. You're tell you're saying you're condoning female manipulation of males. It's worked for millions of years. <laughs> I, I don't see why I'd be against it now. Wow. Now, well, I mean, there's a reason why they talk about feminine wiles, and they're very important. Why are they important? Well, I'll tell you. It's because men are very direct. Uh, we like direct action. We like things done like so. That's right. Uh, Women don't like that at all. No, they don't like that at all, and sometimes they're right. Not always. Well, okay. But sometimes they are right. Well, how are they going to get us to do what they want us to do if they're not going to manipulate us? Okay. Because they're not... Remember that at a certain level, neither gender is really able to reason with the other because they come from very different places. I, I hate to get all deterministic, but... As my late father explained to me, and I will explain this to all of you young gentlemen out there as though it were my father speaking and not me. Boy, do I hear his voice. <laughs> um, men tend to be objective. Women tend to be subjective. There's a great need for both. Here's why. Uh, he illustrated it with a, uh, a return to the cave. He said, imagine that the roles were reversed. Woman, the huntress, out to find food for her family. I have a husband and kid home at the cave. I need to find a deer. There needs to be a deer here for me to kill to take home to my family. There's no deer here. Why is there a deer here when I need one? Meanwhile, back at the cave, Daddy, the nurturer, squalling brat in hand. <laughs> All right, now let me get this straight. I'm going, this thing is going to be completely dependent on me for the next 13, 14 years. Partly dependent for a few more years after that. And I'm going to feel responsible for the bloody thing till I die. Ha! Bam! <laughs> and that was how the human race became extinct. Well, let's look at how it really worked out instead. Okay. Man, the hunter. Okay. I need to get a deer. Fine, but where would a deer go? Yeah, deer, get this deer. Get down to the water hole. But they have a good sense of smell. So I better come from upwind or it'll get a smell of me and run away. Mm. <laughs> Stupid deer. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back at home, Mommy, the nurturer, Squalling brat in hand. Oh, he's so cool. Mommy's own. Then the child vomits. Oh, isn't he sweet? He's my little boo boo. Well, that was absolutely necessary, ladies and gentlemen, or we would not be here today. Uh, you know, there, there are all sorts of, of funny and yet true comments about the difference between men and women. Uh, what does the stupidest man say? What? She'll never change. What does the stupidest woman say? What? He'll change for me. Ah. Uh... You know, there's my, my, my favorite old acronym, uh, MAPWAC. W what does that stand for? Men are pigs, women are crazy. You know, I tell people that. I bet they appreciate it. You know, it works. It's insightful. Mm -hmm. you know, it's something to fall back on every time.
Sad but true. And that's because, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are a fallen people, but we fall in particular patterns. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I may have said this on some other episode, but I'm going to deliver another revelation to you, which you heard here first. In reality, there's no such thing as transgender. You know why I say that? I'll clue you in on something. You may, we're going to the male first, because actually I know being a guy a lot better than I know about being a woman. No, it's true. I've been a man all my life. Uh, well, I was a boy earlier. Anyway, the point is, um, you may think you're a male transgender. You may think guys are the most attractive thing going. You couldn't imagine getting anywhere close to one of those, you know, women, except that you want to be one. Um, but you'll never be a woman. Can't do it. Why not? I'll tell you. Number one, your mind and body have never been affected by the uh, monthly changes of things, the men's sex. That has a huge effect on the female psyche. And you never experienced it. You just don't bloody know. Secondly, uh, childbirth has never been an issue for you. Women, inevitably, and this doesn't matter if they're nuns or, or, or married or single or lesbian or whatever it is, the question of childbirth is always there. Whether they want to do it, they don't want to do it, the this, the that, blah, 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 blah. It's there. It's never been there for you, and it never will be. Thirdly, lastly, is, and I'm sorry to be so graphic, the fear of rape. Now, unless you're living in a prison, of course, or something like that, you know, you were born ship with uh, <laughs> rub sodomy in the lash. But other than that, rape is not something the vast majority of men think about at all. But it's a clear and present danger, even if not consciously, for women. You say, is that danger, man? And you just have never felt that. Yeah, there's, where's the hashtag me too for men? It'll laugh at you if you do that as a man. Yeah, yeah of course they will. And, and even, even if it's a couple of trannies, they'll yeah, laugh at each other. Yeah, of course. It, it doesn't exist. But the same is true, by the way, on the, other, on the other end. If you're looking at me, if you're looking at this episode right now, you're looking me in the face, you're saying, look, I'm a lesbian, I've got a, a cigarette thing wrapped up in my shirt, I'm a truck driver, or a minor, or something. Uh, what about me? You're a chick. I'm sorry, it's the way it is. Because all those things I mentioned, they apply to you. You will never know what it is to live life without them. You just won't. You can't. I, I will never know what it's like to be you. Because I've never lived with those things going on. Uh, again, you may like other women. You may think blah, 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 blah. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And you can have all kinds of surgery done. And you can dress up. And you can do this. You can do that. It's just not going to change the fact that you are what you are. That's it. It's, it's, now, beyond that, one can talk from here to Afghanistan about all sorts of things. What about this? What about that? But the essential truth remains. Men are men. Women are women. If Bruce Jenner dies tomorrow and is dug up in a hundred years, they'll believe he's a man. Maybe a guy got married, uh, buried in a weird costume, but his bones, his chromosomes, everything about him that isn't soft is a man. And that's just the way it is. Um, the reason why I think there's so much discomfort and psychological displeasure today is that people en masse are retreating from these realities. Don't retreat. Embrace it. Be happy you are what you are. And, uh, and, you know, if, which God forbid, but if you've got some element of gender confusion, bear in mind that at a very basic level, there's no confusion at all. Your interests may be somewhat misdirected, but you are what you were made, you know? You know, that, um, that's an important thought about happiness and reality, because that's actually... That's part of my sales pitch when I when I talk to non 
religious people, agnostics, when I'm giving them my sales pitch for the faith, it's based on happiness because happiness is what they're seeking. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm pointing out to them that you're, they're going to be happier uh, with the faith than whatever they're seeking. The Hollywood lifestyle, oh yeah, those are the happiest people. It, proven yeah, by just as Carvey Weinstein. Like Harvey Weinstein. I mean, and don't forget your Xanax and your cocaine. Um, uh, well, see, see, that's the thing. I mean, I've had friends who live such lifestyles, you know, and everything seems okay until they start telling you about their analysts and their antidepressants. Right. Now, mind you, I know there are people who need antidepressants, so that's not my point. Point is, that will not bring you happiness. Facing reality square on will. And you need a spouse who faces reality square on. Like I mean, ladies, any of you who are listening, wouldn't you prefer a guy who stood up for you and with whom you felt safe and confident? Uh... If you want that, that's nice, but don't emasculate him. Guys, if you want a girl who will make you feel like a man and all that sort of thing, that's nice. Uh, but stand up and don't expect a mother out of a wife. You know? Yeah, don't do that. Uh, It, it, again, and, and for heaven's sake, don't look to the new Lost in Space for inspiration. Mind you, it's a fun show, but don't look to it for gender roles. Okay, we'll check that box. We'll make sure. <laughs> uh, no, no gender roles seeking. Uh, new gender roles. In the, in wherever fine rolls and donuts are sold. <laughs> what? Uh, just, very tasty. Yeah, <laughs> something. Anyway, made, made with nuts. And lots of nuts. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, seriously, though, uh, again, yours is a hard road to hoe. I mean, and I'm, you know, close to home. I've seen some of the problems that today's uh, gender role confusion causes people with very good intentions. Um, but again, women, you know, you could be mistress in your own house if you know how to make your men happy and docile. Men... You can be quite fulfilled indeed if you do your share and take up your role. Uh, but don't. There is, incidentally, on this very topic, a, a book or a booklet by Archbishop, uh, or sorry, Bishop Olmsted of Phoenix, that the Knights of Columbus are selling, and I recommend it highly. It's called Into the Breach. The Knights of Columbus, of all people, are pushing it, and I would definitely read it. It's well worth your while. Um, you know, so there you are. 